everyone. Good morning, Om Shanti. Welcome, welcome. Nice to see some regular faces. Mm? Nice and cool outside. Today we've gathered to explore a very, very deep conversation on love. One of the most important powers in the world today that's a great need, don't you think? Yeah, the, what the world needs now is love, sweet love, and more love, and definitely more love. So the speaker and the presenter that we have is someone that I've grown to love very dearly. We met on the America Meditating Radio, which I host on a regular basis. So you can find that on your um, internet, on any of the major networks, iHeart, Spotify, 24-7, America Meditating. So we select particular voices and personalities that we suspect carry a kind of an integrity of the spirit and an, an alignment to the purity of our purpose and vision. And Diane Hayworth came across us for a book that she had published, When You Love Him and You Just Want to Slap Him. How do you, how do you love when you just want to slap somebody? <laughs> and of course you can't help but find out who is the person that comes up with such a brilliant and pure idea. So just to give you an idea about who she is today is... Um, a spiritual coach, speaker, and author who received the Be Love Principles during a direct divine experience in 2018. She's now very passionate about sharing them with the world. She believes everyone can live their joy. Diane is the author of How to Choose Love When You Just Want to Slap Somebody. And she's also featured in this upcoming, this book that a friend of ours has done. It's called Magic and Miracles by Dr. Andrea Pennington. And she's one of the uh, featured authors in that book. You'll get a chance to meet with her after the program, and you can also get a signed copy of the book. And Diane will definitely give you a lot of her time to really seep you into an experience. May I invite you to just not consider this as just another event? I, I, I really want to emphasize this is going to be a life-changing process. So imagine you might have spent $5,000 to come to this event, so you're expecting your money's worth. That's what you're, you've just stepped into. So make sure your seat's comfortable. Your phone is on mute. You can record the sessions if you'd like. If you happen to have Facebook, we are transmitting live on Facebook Live. We would love if you could take out your phone and share it on your Facebook page to your friends to let them know that you're participating in this wonderful process. I'll give you a minute or two. <laughs> All you Facebook folks, I know you're on there saying, oh, look what I cooked today. Oh, look at my new shoes. You like my hairdo? <laughs> so I'm sure you can share this today as well. <laughs> It'll be called Cirrus. So just go to Meditation Museum. So in your Facebook page, if you just type in, in your search mode, Meditation Museum, it'll come up. And then from there, you just look for the share button and you share it to your page. And you're good to go. That means every one of your friends actually know where you are. So if you are wanted by the FBI, don't share it. But everybody will know where you are and they will have an idea of the kind of intention and mode that you're sitting in on Sunday. I'm happy to be your host, Sister Jenna. I direct the Meditation Museums in Washington. It's ran by the Brahma Kumaris, the video that you saw, which is a female-ran nonprofit organization. We are now 9,000 branches in 120 countries with a million volunteers at your service. So all of us that show up here at the Meditation Museums, we show up with our volunteer love and hearts. And we do it because we believe there's a golden age world approaching, even though this one doesn't seem so golden age right now. So what we're doing is that we're developing the innate abilities and the soul now that we will transfer that quality into the future. So we believe if you don't put all the good qualities in the soul now, there'll be no future. If you're into hate and anger and fighting and anxiety and competition and criticism, then that will be your future. If you're into acceptance, love, understanding, peace, and purity, well, that would be your future. So that's what the Brahma Kumari's work is. We're working to create that sort of a future age that's golden. So let's take a moment of silence. Breathe in deeply. Inhale, exhale. Become very present. Allow the energy of love to circle around you, to hover over you, to be with you, 
to appreciate you. Don't run away from your fears. Face them. Be honest. Be true. Stop playing games with yourself and with people. And just be straight up. And bring the energy of God's light into everything that you do. And you'll feel free. Things will be clear. Your heart will be strong. And your life will be good. Take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. And we welcome Diane Hayworth to the room. Thank you. So you see why I love being at the Meditation Museum. Can you feel the energy here? And even if you're watching at home, or hopefully you're not driving, but maybe you're listening, um, it, this is just the most beautiful, peaceful place where everyone is accepted. And this is one of the few places that I'm ever around where I just completely feel held in love. And I think that's really important now more than anywhere, any other time. And maybe you'd agree with that. So today we're going to talk about being the love in chaotic times. But before we talk about the Be Love Principles, which is um, the majority of our program today, I want to just take a few minutes to explain why this is important. Now, obviously, y'all probably notice we have some stuff going on in the world. Uh, chaos is a good name for that. If you're like me, when you turn on the news, it's almost over. Well, it's not even almost. It's overwhelming when you think about what's going on domestically not only politically, but with fires and, and hurricanes, and then we've got things all going on overseas. So the chaos there is, it can be really overwhelming. I found a really simple way to illustrate how love works in there. Who knows what a metronome is? Anybody ever take piano? So it's that little triangle thing that sits on top of the piano, piano and it goes like this, right? And it keeps time. Anybody ever just surf YouTube like I do? There are the coolest videos there. And the, oh, I see you surf because you smiled. Okay, good. So there's a video where there is a table full of metronomes. And there's like 20 of them. And they're all going different ways. Think of that as chaos. Everybody is vibrating in their own energy. It's, there's nothing harmonious. Everything is going separately. When you watch these videos, what happens is within a very few moments, a couple of them will start to go in tandem and then a couple more. And within three or four minutes, depending on how many metronomes are on the table, they are all going together. They're in harmony. They are in coherence. The reason this is important is because love brings us into heart coherence. Anybody ever heard about heart math or maybe you follow the work of Joe Dispenza? When your heart is in coherence, your brain can be in coherence. And guess what? We're happier, we're healthier, we're more focused, we're more peaceful, even amid chaos. So being love, not just choosing love, but being the energy, the vibration of love helps you be in a more you're just being able to function at a much higher rate in a chaotic environment. And here's the part that I really love. When you are vibrating at the vibration of love, it affects everyone around you. So even though in your personal life you might have some crazy little metronomes, right, and they don't look like they're, heart like they're vibrating like the rest of you, the more you stay grounded in the energy of love, the more you're able to affect not only yourself, but the people around you, that goes to your community, that goes to your state, that goes to your country, and goes to the world. Does that make sense? Okay. So we got the whole theory. So here's what happened the way I got the Be Love Principles. Obviously, I, I do love to meditate. I've been meditating for more than 25 years. Does anybody like to meditate here? This is a beautiful facility to help you understand the value of meditation. If it's not a practice that you typically have now, then I would encourage you to start it. Even if it's a few minutes a day, it's life-changing. 
So this was back in uh, May 2018. And I was attending a Hay House event with my mentor, Robert Holden. Has anybody heard of Dr. Holden? Yeah. And we were broken up into pairs. This was in Toronto. And I was paired with a lady that I did not know. And we were given instructions for an exercise that I actually do every morning. He told us to get into pairs, to imagine we were seated on a foundation of love, and to silently to ourselves ask the question, love, what would you most have me know today? Now, when I'm using the word love, I'm talking about the intelligent, creative, expansive energy that creates galaxies, that makes the season change, that makes the tides come in and out, spirit, God, universe, I, we just call it love. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the love you have for your spouse or your fuzzy slippers, or that's attachment and affection. I'm talking about the dynamic, intelligent, creative, expansive energy of love. So that's who I'm addressing. I was going first. And I have to say, I was a little smug, because I do this every morning, and I thought, well, I know how to do this. This will be cool. And I, I actually journal this every morning. And usually, I will get answers like, calm down, meditate more, you know, things, things like that. So I'm seated, eyes shut, imagine that I'm in this energy of love, and I silently ask, love, what would you most have me know today? And immediately... It's like I see, I see cascading images, like the old film strips. Remember how those looked? I can't, it's even difficult to explain what I saw. And the next instant, all of what I'm going to tell you happened in, it felt like a single heartbeat. I'm above watching myself below walk up the stairs to my daughter's house, my adult daughter's house. There's three steps, and at the top of the steps is a deck, and there was a a glass, pane glass door. And I'm watching this. And on the other side of the door is my grandson, who at the time was 15 months old. And I, as the observer, saw my heart open, and I saw the energy of love bouncing between me and him, from him to me. I've never, I've never seen that before. I mean, obviously, I know I love the little thing, but I'd never, I hadn't experienced anything like that. And I heard, greet everyone with an open heart without an agenda. The next instant, I'm inside the house, and it's just he and I, and I'm looking at him. And check out Facebook, he's a gorgeous kid. If I do say, I mean, he's a cute kid. But I'm looking past his physical form. I'm looking into his essence, and I see this beautiful iridescent essence. And again, I hear, see the divine essence in everyone. The next instant, we're in the family room. And he, he's 15 months old. We're playing, and he's, we're playing blocks, and he, he throws a block, and he actually hits me in the cheek. And I think, yeah, he's a kid. He doesn't know what he's doing. And I hear, forgive quickly completely, unconditionally. The next millisecond, I'm in a darkened space, and I can just barely see the outline of a door. The door starts to creak open just a tiny little bit. There's a sliver of light coming out. And there is this bright, brilliant, yellow light teeming with energy and life and joy I've had a near-death experience, so I have seen the white light, which from my experience was soft and enveloping and loving. This was, this was loving and safe, but it, this was like Mardi Gras. I've never been to Mardi Gras, but this is what I think Mardi Gras would be like because it was like, woohoo, let's go. I mean, it was just dynamic, energetic, blissful. It was just fantastic. But it was almost overwhelming. I mean, it was just a sliver that was coming out of this door. And in that millisecond, I realized the love I have for my grandson is an infinitesimal, infinitesimal sliver of the love that's there for us all. And what I heard was, you're all trying to get back to the light. You, you don't, you, you're not getting this right. You never left. 
you never left the light of the all. And after that, boom, I, it, it was over. So can you imagine my poor partner, she's sitting here and I'm crying and she's like, what happened? And I can't even talk. Like I literally can't even talk. I was so overwhelmed. This is one of the experiences that you not only see, but I heard, I felt it in my body. Never had anything like that happen before. So I get through the rest of the class. Um, that evening, I'm in Toronto, so I always talk to my husband. I live right outside of Warrington in the Culpeper area. Talk to him. And the second he picked up the phone, I knew something was wrong. So I could hear it in his voice. And I said, what, what's going on? And he told me that a friend of ours, his estranged wife, had murdered their seven-year-old son and taken her own life. So, I mean, you see how that affects you all, and you don't even know who I'm talking about. We were devastated, just beyond devastated. I, um, I certainly have had times in my life where I have danced with depression. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to think perhaps that's the best choice. As a mother and a grandmother, I was really struggling with what would happen that I would think that was my best course of action. So we were devastated for these people who'd lost their lives. We were devastated for our friend. We were devastated for the families. Our whole community was affected. So we got off the phone, and I tried to go to sleep. Could you go to sleep after that? I couldn't. I tossed and turned all night long. I just couldn't comprehend what had happened. It just was overwhelming to me. About 3 a.m., I literally sat up in bed by myself in the hotel room, and I said, I know, out loud, by the way, I know I can't do anything, but how am I supposed to be with this? Show me how to be with it. And I immediately heard, be love. Greet everyone with an open heart, without an agenda. See the divine essence in everyone. Forgive quickly, completely, unconditionally. You're all just babies. You're all just trying to get back to the light. Well, I didn't expect that. And I started doing my work. Started doing forgiveness work. I started doing, I just asked, show me what you need me to do. So I fell back to sleep. Maybe I slept for an hour or two. Got up, went to, to a class the next day. And I had no voice. I had completely lost my voice. Which was really interesting because when I was on the phone with my husband the night before, I said, this is an unspeakable horror. And then I couldn't speak. Now, I was in one of those Hay House events, and it's like this. You're surrounded by love. So people I didn't know were giving me hands on healing. People are giving me tea. They're giving me I don't even know what they gave me, but I just took it. I was like, I just, just, okay, you, you look pretty cool. I just took it. So I got through, got through the day, but I couldn't talk. It was so bad, you guys, that, you know, when you talk to your phone, like Google, show me. Google couldn't even hear me. My Google girl could not hear me. She couldn't. It just, that's how weak my voice was. There was no voice there. Get through the day, and one of my really good friends w was staying there and was going to, we were going to go to dinner that night. So I told her what happened. I, didn't, I mean, I hadn't told anybody. I told her, and she literally had to put her, her ear right here to hear me. And she was so supportive. She was so loving. It made me understand we can't go through life's traumas by ourselves. We're here to help each other, and that's what she did for me. Get on the plane, go home the next day. My husband gets me from the airport, and by this time, I've got a fever. I'm sick. He has to drive me to the doctor because I can't even drive. Now, I'm not sick, and I was really sick. The doctor tells me that I have to... I have to be on total voice rest for seven days. And I'm not going to lie. My husband's first reaction was, oh, good luck with that. Ha ha. But I, I didn't have a choice, really, because she explained to me that if I kept trying to strain and use my voice, I'd lose it. Now, that was for seven days. Ten days past that, so in just ten days, I had to deliver a sermon at Arlington Metaphysical Church and do a class. So I had to have my voice, so I started my seven days in silence. The thing that, there were so many things, that was one of the biggest gifts, I think, of this whole thing. First of all, 
when you go on a meditative retreat, then you tell your family and your friends, hey, you know, mama's off the grid for a few days. They know what to expect. I had no warning. It just, I couldn't talk. Yes, I could text, and I had one of those write-on wipe-off boards. Do you remember those? Anybody lived in last century? We had these things. Yeah, yeah, I see a couple of you. Um, but that, that was it. So, of course, I texted and emailed my clients and talked to my, well, I didn't talk, but I con communicated with my family. But I started to feel so distance. So, for example, for my grandson, I see him at least once a week, and we usually FaceTime. Well, we didn't exactly know what I had, so you can't be around a kid when you're sick. You know, I wasn't going to be able to see him. So I tried to FaceTime him. Well, he didn't understand why Gigi couldn't talk. That's what he calls me. And it, 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 he was really upset because he was trying to talk to me. So my daughter said, tell you what, we just won't do this until you're better. So not only can I not talk to my friends and my family, but I, I'm even cut off from you know, my grandson. My husband, who is wonderful, he was taking care of me. The first few days, I couldn't even move. I was just on the couch. He's taking care of me, and he's always, what do you need? What can I get you? Do you need this? Do you need that? But I even noticed a change in him. He tells me at least three or four times a day, I love you. Do you know how much you mean to me? He's just, just the way he is. Well, he stopped doing that. So on my little wipe-off board, you know, I write, why aren't you telling me you love me? And he said, well, I am. I am telling you that. And I write, no, no, you're not. And he said, I guess it's because you can't say it back to me. And I thought, whoa, that was insightful. So after about three days, four days maybe, he takes me to a restaurant because I just had to get out of the house. And uh, the doctor had given me a um, prescription pad sheet, and it said total voice rest. So I had that and a little notepad. And we went to one of our restaurants where we hang out, and he had gotten up to go to the restroom. I knew what he wanted to get. Here comes the waitress. And I show her that, that slip that says total voice rest. And then I point to what we want, and, of course, I don't ever order anything normal. So I had to write out what I was going to get. So she just points, goes like this, and I wrote, you can talk. Just because I can't talk doesn't mean you can't talk. And she went, oh, I was trying to be respectful. And again, I thought, wow. So in those seven days, I realized how isolated I felt, how separate I felt. And I started to realize, what do, this, what do people that with... Um, handicaps feel like? What do immigrants feel like? What does the mentally ill feel like? What do all these people who feel isolated? And what I realized was all of those people, like I was feeling at the time, felt separate from that light that I saw. We felt separate from the light. That was tremendously impactful to me. Tremendously impactful. So there was a lot of gifts that came from that. Uh, I would love to tell you that I just started speaking about it, but I still it took me months to just figure out what the heck did this mean? Did it really happen? Uh, I actually was at an event maybe six weeks later here at the museum, and I dragged Sister Jenna in the corner, and I'm like, you're not going to believe what happened to me. And, of course, she believes everything, so that wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't an issue for her. But I, I found people like that that I trusted to share this story with. And like, what, what do I do with this? What do I know? And everyone said, you'll know, you'll know, you'll know. So I kept saying, show me, show me, show me, because I did not know. What's happened over the last year and a half is that this work has evolved. You will actually get, um, before you leave, I will give you a sheet of the different um, principles. But you'll also get... One of these bracelets, Be Love, is on the front. The BeLovePrinciples.org is on the back. That is a free website where not only is this story there, but there's exercises. I didn't know what to do with this, but I knew I needed to implement it and start to work with it. So I would do things like, for a week, I would work on one of the principles. So for one whole week... One whole week, I decided I was going to greet everyone with an open heart without an agenda, which was cool for my family. But then what about that guy that cut me off on 66? 
What about that person that was kind of rude to me at the supermarket? What happened when I, you know, was at watching the news? All these places I realized where I wasn't being open. So without an agenda became, I came to understand means without judgment, without preconceived notions, without saying, oh, I better watch that guy. He looks like kind of a jerk. <laughs> I didn't do that. But I also didn't didn't say, it, it was without any, it, I didn't start, I started not judging this is going to be a good experience or a bad experience. I was just letting it be an experience. I was just letting love flow through me and have an experience and trusting it was what it was going to be. We're going to do an exercise about that in a second. So one of the reasons I did this is because even though this is, these are my principles, I forget. So I keep it right here. Because if I'm going to fuss at my husband, this is typically how I do it. <laughs> and I'll look down and I'll go, oh, am I going to, am I being love? In that second, I might not be. So I found that just having a reminder that my intention is to be love has helped me tremendously, tremendously. So I, as I say, I've worked with this for about a year, more than a year, year and a half now. And at that website, there is a not only a little book, but there's a workbook. So if you want to work your way through it, you can do that. And I would encourage you to do that. There's a free meditation. What I want before we, we are going to do an exercise, but one of the things I want to talk to you about before that is why even take up this work? And it's because it's going to benefit you. We talked about chaos with the metronomes. We talked about chaos in the world. You will have chaos in your life. You just will. I mean, I wish you wouldn't, but you will. And that happened to me. What happens for me is in the morning, the very first thing I think when I wake up is thank you. Because my mama taught me any day above ground is a good day. So I'm always first thing is thank you, thank you, thank you. Then I set my intentions for the day. Show me how to be an instrument of your peace. Show me how to serve. And then I started with the be love principles. Show me how to be loved today. Show me how to greet everyone with an open heart. Show me, I went, oh, I go all through. And I see the light of the all. And I fill myself up with that. And that's how I start my day. So last April, we had chaos come into our home. The same way, not the same way, but you'll have opportunities. My beloved grandson, who at this point was two years old, was hurt. He was hurt by someone. And it looks like it was deliberately hurt. Now, I will tell you he's fine, but we did not know that at the time. My, fam my daughter was, of course, hysterical, as any mother would be. Uh, he had a concussion. He's two years old. So if anybody have two-year-old, around two-year-old, they, they can't talk. They can't verbalize. So he couldn't tell us exactly what happened. He's two years old. One of the things that you look at when there's a concussion, is there a change in behavior? Well, two-year-olds change behavior all the time. You also look for, um, is there sudden aggression? Is there, um, is there sleeplessness? It's all just a regular two-year-old kid. So it was really hard to figure out, was there lasting damage, or was he just a two-year-old being a two-year-old? So that added to the frustration. I can't talk too much about this because there's actually a court case. But we went through dealing with investigators and Commonwealth attorneys and grand juries. And my family doesn't do that. I mean, I have watched Law and Order for 20 years, but that's really the closest I ever got to that kind of thing. So you can imagine, in the midst of wondering, is our baby okay, we're going through all this trauma. And as the grandmother, is anybody else a grandmother here, a grandparent? You support your child and your grandchild. And that's what we do. What I saw was the chaos that was in the family. I saw the people that were, you just have to sue them, sue everybody. Just, just sue everybody. To the anger, the frustration, how did this happen? Why did you let this happen? We need to string these people up. They need to go to jail. Just all of these things. What I was able to do, and it's not because I'm super serene, it's because I've been doing the Be Love Principles, is I was the one that was peaceful. I immediately, when I, because 
you know, I was one of the first ones to find out. I immediately said, show me, show me how to be loved here. I was able to see, I don't know the people personally that, that there were two of them that, that this perpetuated this act, but uh, I could tune into them and I could see they were terrified. I could feel their divine essence. I know the part of them that is the light of the all, but I could see the human part that had made a mistake and got caught and was scared. I could see all of that and I could forgive. So what has happened is with all this chaos, I've been the one that's been able to be calm, focused, be able to say, have you thought of this alternative? What if we do it this way? Whereas everybody else has been those crazy little chaotic tops running around or those metronomes we talked about. So practicing being love lets you be the anchor in these kind of situations, not only for yourself, but for your family. It lets you be able to be the calm voice, not because you're better than anybody else, because that's not the way it works. You're just in a different place. That's all it is. You're just in a different place. But I've seen this now play out in what was very, very chaotic in my own family. And this is ongoing, too. This happened back in April. The trial's not until January. So not only is that an ongoing trauma for my family, it's an ongoing trauma from the people who are waiting to go on trial. They're, I mean, everybody has a trauma. The more you can be the energy of love, the more you can practice these principles, the better you are able to not only get through your own trials, help your family, your friends at work. You're all parts of organizations. You guys all have jobs. You are in, you're in different communities, right? Rather, you decide to share the Be Love principles with people or not. You can be the beacon of strength. You can be that tower of love. You can be the one that sees everyone in the all. That can be you. The thing I think that is really important is what we don't hear on the news often is how many of us are taking a stand for love. And the more and more of us decide that we will be love for ourselves, for our family, for our community of the world, that's when things change. And I think there's lots of change going on right now. We just don't necessarily see it. Does all that make sense? Yeah. This is really, really powerful work. The other thing that's happened is as I shared this with a few people before I started teaching it, I would get these little emails from my friends. I mean, these are people that know me. Hey, you know that weird story you told me? I've been doing that. That stuff really works. I wanted to knock somebody out the other day at work, but I remembered to be love. So that's one potential arrest that didn't happen because of the be love principles. This... This can really be life-changing, but it's like meditation. It works when you are consistent and practice it. So we're going to do an exercise now, and we're going to just have a little bit of, a, of an experience of the Be Love Principles. So let's see. How many do we have? How many do we have here, Antonio? Because it takes two of us to count. That's what it takes. So let's break up into just wherever you are. Let's break up into groups of three. Let's break up into groups of three. Just move your little chair around. They let you do that. And how many groups are we going to have? This is going to be... I had to get a signal from the back of the room. <laughs> okay. So... so is every, and, and I want you to be kind of tight so that you can actually talk to each other. Yeah, so we'll probably pull out here. You, you guys want to come up here a little bit? So for, for you at home, let me explain to you what we're going to do. You guys can, why don't you put your chair right there, and then that way these three can get together a little better. Yeah. Um, each of them are going, each group is going to be charged with working on a different principle. And then we'll get back together and they'll talk to us about it. So I'm going to give those out now.
we're going to do a practice called sentence completion. So here's the, here's the first one. This group is going to be around in a circle, and I'll explain it to you guys again. They're going to be take turns completing this sentence. One thing that could change if I could see myself with an open heart without an agenda might be. It's yours. This group, they're going to be working on this one. One thing that could change if I could see the divine essence in others might be. That's a good one. This group, one thing that could change if I could more easily forgive others might be. I know, you get a good one. There we go. Now, this group back here, their sentence completion, and I'll tell you all here what, what we'll do in a second. One thing that could change if I could remember I never left the light of the all might be. This is you guys. And then I have one more group. Okay, so remember at the beginning we talked about, and I know you were here for the beginning, so you'll help your group. We talked about me opening to love with meditation. Yours is going to be one way I could be more open to love is. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. And for you, those of you at home, any of these things that you want to do a sentence completion on, that's great. Whoever is tallest in your group, Sorry, gentlemen in the sweatpants, it's going to be you over there. <laughs> uh, you're going to start, and you're just going to complete that sentence. And you're going to go around the circle for several minutes, just completing the sentence, whatever comes to you. Before we do that, let's do this. I want your answers to come from your heart, not your head. Because I'm intuitive, and I can hear half of what's going on in the crowd, and it's like this. Uh, I hope she doesn't get my answer. I got a really cool answer. What if, what if I don't, can't think of anything? There's, there's, no, it, there, there's no test. Everything's fine. But I don't want you to think about this. I want you to feel your answer. So shut your eyes for a second. And I want you to imagine that you can breathe love in through the back of your heart, and you're radiating love out the front. That energy of all there is, that intelligent, creative, expansive energy that knows everything. Bring it in through the back of your heart. Breathe in. Radiate love through the front. There we go. Breathe love in through the back. Radiate love out the front. One more time. Bring love in through the back. Radiate love out the front. There we go. When you're ready, tall person begins. We'll do this for a few minutes. So that's a great question. You're going to answer it in, in rounds. So he'll give his answer, she'll give her answer, she'll give her answer. Anything that strikes you as interesting, you can write it down. It's just for yourselves. Sometimes somebody says something really cool and you want to remember it. And sometimes you want people to write down what you say because it's really cool. So write your, your neighbor's stuff down too so they feel good. Okay. You're going to go around several times. Yeah, that's the bad news. You're going to go around several times. <laughs> so go ahead. Don't, don't worry, I'm going to count. It's going to be like at least five or, five or more minutes. So go right ahead. As you're completing this last round, 
choose one person in your group to be a spokesperson because we're going to talk about this. That's when the nervous giggles always come in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine to talk until I have to talk in front of everybody. I get it. And remember, all you're doing is completing the sentence. So we're going to start up here. May I borrow one of your papers for a second? Don't worry, I can't read anything but what's printed. <laughs> so here's our first group. And what I tried to do was choose, right, each of the principles. And you'll see some of them are from the personal perspective, some of them are for the other. You will always have the greatest transformation when you work with yourself first. But if you're like me, you're pretty sure everybody else was all messed up and you were pretty cool until you realized it starts here. So group one discussed one thing that could change if I could see the divine essence in others might be. And who's going to speak for your group? Looks like it's you, babe. Yeah, we'll be more understanding, peaceful, loveful. We'll be more calm, stable. So when we get that divine energy, our environment will be much better when we spread that. Wow. And we'll have more harmony, compassion. We'll be less judgmental to each other. May I ask you a question? Did I pay you to say any of that? <laughs> we don't know each other, right? Yes. Okay. No, we don't yeah. know each other. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So yeah, our happiness will be more stable throughout the day. Wow. Our happiness will be, thank you, thank you guys. Our happiness will be more stable throughout the day. Who wouldn't want a slice of that pie? Sign me up. Good job. So I don't know these ladies. They realize themselves, if they were able to see the divine essence in others, then you're looking past this, right? I always tell my clients, you and everyone that you know, your essence is divine. Your personality might be a little messed up, but you are divine. What about you all? What were you working on? Let me read what your question was. So this is one thing that could change if I could see myself with an open heart without an agenda might be. Okay. Um, it's pretty much ours were related. Um, we would be less, more, actually less fearful related to that is less anxious, more forgiving, and um, more adventurous. Less self-conscious because we are so self-critical. They're all related. Yeah. We're very hard on ourselves. We overthink things. We're over-analytical. A little more positive, less negative. Um, wow. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, this is pretty much it. Unless you guys, have, have I covered all? Okay. So, they're all pretty much related. I think the basic thing is to become positive, you know, once you... So how, so do you see how that could be life-changing? And it's always the one that I don't think is going to mention adventurous that, that says stuff like that. Yeah, I'm going to be watching you now. Because I want to go wherever you're going. I think it's going to be fun. That's exactly right. We don't step out and do things because we're afraid. And that brings up a good point. I'm sure if I got an email from God that said, hey, I'm going to give you a life-changing a life vision, be ready on Saturday, I would have hit delete, delete, right? That's exactly what I would have done. Like, ooh, he doesn't mean me. It, uh, even at the time, I must say, after I had this vision, I looked around and I thought, that chick looks a lot more on the ball than me. I bet this was supposed to be hers. I bet she was supposed to have this. But no, you get what you get, and you are able to, 
to have a more adventurous, loving, peaceful, happy life when you accept and choose to live from love. Great job. How about you guys? What was your what was your question? And I'll read that and then I'll send it to you. So one thing that could change if I could more easily forgive others. Oh, y'all got the big one. Wow. We would feel more free. Up a little bit higher. Um, laugh and cry more. Uh, less stress. Just feel less stressed. We would be more happy. Um, listen to better music. I love that. Happy, adventurous <laughs> music lovers. That's exactly what we have going on here. Yeah. And then we, again, went back to happiness, but consistently happy. Not a roller coaster of happiness. Remember that old song, y'all? Not, mm -hmm. not some of you, but some of you remember it. Yeah. Um, have more energy. Um, be more present. Self-care and self-love. Um, more love um, and more vulnerable. Show your vulnerability and then have desire to help others more. All of these are wonderful. They came up with something that's really interesting that I want to make sure we, we spend a minute on. More energy. What happens when you are stressed and overwhelmed? Do you have energy? No. One of the things that happens is from a physiological standpoint, not only um, are you dealing with cortisol, which is your stress hormone, but I've actually seen medical films that show what's going on in the brain and your blood vessels constrict, which means you're not getting oxygen to your brain. So do you want to be making decisions at work or financial decisions or decisions about anything when you are don't, not having a lot of oxygen to your brain? I don't think you do. So this, all of these first three groups have shown us how all kinds of aspects of our life can change. Now, what do, you all had the, the light of the all, I think, didn't you? Okay. One thing that could change if I could remember, I never left the light of the all, which could also mean the oneness. And who's going to speak here? Here we go. Um, so we wrote, we would be more open-minded um, when we interact with people. Uh, we'd be more willing to put down our guards because we would be trusting ourselves and other people more. Um, and then we'd be more, this is, the same, similar to what you had mentioned, uh, we'd be more energetic and more intentional about what we do, as opposed to just riding through life and, you know, just... So, so less reactive and more intentional. Yep, exactly. Perfect. Um, and then, again, we'd be more open-minded uh, to different ideas, different people, um, and not take things personally. We'd be more grounded in ourselves. Um, we said we'd recover quickly from emotional trauma, um, and we'd, get, we'd have a quieter mind. Uh, we would be more, you know, self-confident and know that we're a blessing, you know, to the world. Um, yeah, so those are some of the things we talked about. Yeah, those are just some of the things. Be a blessing to the world. Just some, just some of the things. Yeah, be a blessing to the world. So do you get an idea? I mean, you guys have learned about this in, in an hour. Do you see the power of this work? It, it really is life-changing. Now, um, this is a point I want to make before we get to our last group. From my perspective, and it's just my perspective, love is, it does not mean you don't have healthy boundaries. It doesn't mean that you're just, you know, la, 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 you're going around like this. Love is fierce. Love is a wonderful, creative, courage, brave energy. So when you're being open-minded to others, it doesn't mean you necessarily have to agree with them because I'm getting ready for Thanksgiving, and I know that's not going to be... <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of not agreeing maybe over there. But I can still love everybody where they are, and I can love them enough to respect their right to have a different opinion. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's hear from our last group. And you guys had an interesting one. I gave them one that I give um, a lot of folks... And this one, remember the way I got this had to do with being open to love. 
So what this group discussed was one way I could be more open to love is, and are you going to be a spokesperson? Um, the first one was allowing yourself to become more vulnerable. Second one was receive people without judgment, um, forgiveness, and humility, uh, actively seeking positive and negative feedback from others, um, be mindful of others' emotional states. Um, somebody said divine soul, so looking um, and accepting other people for how great they are. Um, looking and accepting other people for how great they are, um, allowing others, uh, or not allowing your emotions to get in the way of other people wow. or your own self. So. Wow. Wow. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice voice. That, that's, that, one of the reasons I love doing these is because <laughs> I can't think all this up, and I'm glad it's recorded because I'll go back and check. This is some... Um, this is really fantastic insights. And again, I've been working with this over a year. You guys just got this. And you can see already. <laughs> Never work with kids or dogs. That's, that's kind of what I do. No, no, just kidding. Actually, the first thing that happens when I come to the meditation museum is my friends say, are you going to stay happy? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, they're, you're, you're second. <laughs> You're second, but you're, you are in there. Thank you very much for participating in this. I really appreciate it. I have additional sheets up here. If there's any exercises you want to do at home after this, you're welcome to do it. But thank you. Thank the people in your group, and then get back in your rows. Thank every one of you for being open, honest, vulnerable. That isn't something that we usually feel comfortable or safe enough doing and that is one of the reasons again I love being here in the meditation museum because the environment invites us to feel safe to feel loved to feel vulnerable that's one of that's why this is one of my favorite places actually so you're going to actually now get a copy of the be love principles and we've got one more thing to do before my friend sister Jenna comes back up here and actually we'll do a couple things Here's a basket. These are the Be Love bracelets. Just take one and pass it along. If we have any left over, you're welcome just to get others. I have different colors. I even have white ones for my BK buddies. There we go. <laughs> so, does everybody have a copy of the principles? Everybody, everybody has a copy? Good. So, here's one thing I would encourage you to do. Post this somewhere, put it on your phone, put it on your mirror, but have these in front of you. What I have found was as much value as I got from looking at these individually, when I used them together is where it was really powerful. When I talked about the issue I had with my family, my, my grandson being hurt, I went through that. And what I did was we, I know my beautiful group over here was talking about the light of the all. I actually did a meditation where I saw myself in the light. I brought my grandson in the light. I brought my family in the light. I brought the ladies that are involved in this lawsuit into the light so I could see us all in that light of the all. So I could remember we are all one in essence. Now, what questions might you have? And Sister Jenna, I bet they might want to ask some questions of you too. Anybody have questions about this? Don't be like I was after this meditation and just go, y'all are awake at least, so. What questions might you have? Are there any situations that you might wonder about? We all know what we're thinking, yes. <laughs> Great question. Uh, get control of the situation, not in a controlling way, but just to make things function. Right. Okay. So the question was, when you're dealing with um, 
we'll just say an un, a temporarily unruly teenager, perhaps. Defiant. Defiant, okay. I'm, it's defiant teenager. Mm -hmm. How do you get control of the situation? One of the very first things that I would suggest you do is back up and be ready for the confrontation. Yeah, there we go. So when you meditate consistently, you are less triggered. This, following this protocol, a template, whatever you want to call it, is a type of meditation. What I find is the more I practice this, the less I am triggered. It doesn't mean crazy stuff doesn't happen. It just means I'm less triggered by it. So in that situation, if it was a couple years ago, um, even then the very first thing I would have tried to do is take a breath. Take a breath. What we see played out all over the planet now is when aggression is met with aggression, what happens? Yeah, it, it's not like, the, yeah. So for you to be the calm voice, so for you to be, when you're in any kind of situation like that, and, and when you're being, I'm not saying that that was an attack kind of situation, but there can be times when you feel like you're attacked by your spouse or, or somebody at work. Be grounded in a foundation of love. Just take a breath. You know that breath I taught, I taught you in and out through the through the, the heart? That will help your brain open up. That will help your brain open up. And then if you have to diffuse it and say, we're going to wait five minutes, wait five minutes. But to sit there and make sure you are, are um, coming from the right space will help. Yes, ma'am. I have the same type of situation. My 18-year-old, she went to college, and she doesn't want to even text like I'm okay or I'm okay. Yeah. And she doesn't want to even text me. She just wants to be in the Check on me only once a week. How do you deal with this? Okay. And that happens at both ends, right? Because you can have um, senior parents that all of a sudden decide, you know, they're going on a road trip with their Canasta Club, and they don't want to tell you where they're going, and you don't know if they're in Vegas in some hotel room. You don't know what they're doing, if they've got their medication. You don't know. Again, the more you're grounded in love, the easier it is for you. And this is where I employ my very favorite prayer. Love, what would you have me know about this? I will certainly will. Thank you. Uh, her question had to do also with um, confrontation with a child, which could be with anybody, actually. Being grounded and at, do a show me prayer. That's what I do. Just show me. And I will ask specifically, show me what to do with this situation. Show me the next three moves I need to make in my business. That's one I do a lot. What three things do I need to do to move my business forward in the next three days? Who do I need to reach out to to talk about the Be Love principles? You can say, how do I live in harmony with, this was your daughter? With my daughter, we're at this. You're at a very interesting, at 18, that's a really interesting time because on the one hand, you said, little birdie, fly out of the nest, but you still want that tether. You, still, <laughs> you don't want them to fly too far. So this is a growth opportunity for you as well. So the lesson, ask for your lesson. Look for the divine essence. How can you greet her, your child, anybody else that you're dealing with? How can you greet them with an open heart without an agenda? In a way that makes you feel comfortable, how everybody, right, will, will be comfortable. And you might want to work a little on the forgiveness part and the trust. Trust is a hard, it was a really hard lesson for me because I wanted three or four texts today. You're going to lunch, what would you eat? Did you eat all your Brussels sprouts? <laughs> So then you'll negotiate. Okay. Ask her for a letter, just K. Like that's it. Just K. See if she see if she'll do K. And negotiate, but negotiate from a place of not not fear. And I understand as a parent that I mean that's our kind of our job, right? You're tran you're in a transition point, and love is what is going to make that transition easier for you and her. Yes, ma'am. That is a great question. Um, and in the situation with my daughter's family, I will. Um, the question was betrayal. What do you do with betrayal? 
And that was part of what happened in my daughter's situation. That was one of the people involved in that was a friend. So there was a lot of betrayal there. I always believe, and I am not a mental health professional. I'm a trained coach, um, but I'm not a mental health professional. I believe in acknowledging and feeling your feelings. If you feel betrayed, you feel betrayed. And what I try to work with on myself is not staying stuck in the energy of betrayal. I recognize it, and I do my best to allow it to move through. How, depending on what the betrayal is, it could be a day, it could be two days, it could be a year. It depends on you. What I do know is the more I stay anchored in the love, the more I'm not only able to see different sides of that, the way I was with the people in the situation that I explained to you earlier, I could see the fear behind these people. So I, it, it wasn't that it excused what they did, by the way, but I could see that it wasn't an intentional act to do harm. There was fear involved. And when I tried to see the divine essence, and I, for, forgiveness was a big one for me as well and for my clients, that allowed me to move forward in a way that I, I would have been stuck in the past. Does that help you? Absolutely. My rule is that if I encounter one negative act, I have to see seven positive acts to get over that. So if somebody does something to me that hurts me, I have to remove myself from there and try to be in friends and do something seven positive things. So when you encounter something that you perceive as negative, then you try to kind of override that. It's almost like getting a new download, like you're, you upgrade your program. Right, so you, you do it seven times. Move it out of my system, kind of. I don't, so I don't think about it anymore. Everybody has their own methods. What I can tell you is the more centered in love I am, the less triggered I am. It doesn't mean that I'm never hurt, but I'm always saying, um, and believe me, if I'm sitting there getting bit by a dog, I'm going to leave the room. I, I don't mean that never happy of course but I'm going to make sure I'm not in a position to be hurt but then I'm going to ask show me the lesson here show me the divine essence show me what's going on and if I need to forgive I forgive that's and it's just worked for me and then if there is someone that's betrayed me or someone that's hurt me I do a meditation where I bring them into the light with me I have for years sent light to people and love to people and actually I do it to sister Jenna happy everybody that meditation museum all the time but what I found is when I bring you into the light with me that's where I feel the oneness at a different level does that make sense uh, sister Jen will be coming up and yes ma'am yep have you ever seen, like some people are like maybe toxic for you and you have to stay do you ever seen that or do you that's probably why I've been divorced twice oh. yeah <laughs> which I don't put at the top of my resume. Um, but, but I have felt that in the past. I can tell you that um, while there are certain people that I may not choose to be around, what I concentrate now more on is how can I see the divine essence of that person? And the one thing that's happened, and this certainly happened with some of the people in my past, in retrospect, because the more decades you live, the longer you have to look back, and I got more looking back than looking ahead, quite frankly, right now. What I see is the good and the divine that came from even those situations. And I have no idea what their role is here. You know, maybe some of my relatives, they're just here to tick everybody off so we all choose love. I don't know. But I respect that they're on their path the way that I'm on mine. But I'm not going to tell you it's like super easy. That would not be authentic. There are some days that I'm just going, be love, be love, I'm going to be love. But I do get myself out of it when I meditate and when I practice these principles in the morning. Those be love days are a lot, a lot less than they used to be. But every once in a while they come up. Thank you. Yes. How do you authentically see the divine essence? Okay. In a very, very hostile person or situation. But from an authentic way, without spiritual bypassing. So the question is, how do you see, how do I see? Yeah, how, Me? Do you see the 
Okay, see the divine essence in uh, when there is a toxic person or situation in front of you? First of all, um, without spiritual bypass, I think was the rest of your question. You know, I've been on this path for many years. So I believe that that occurs authentically for everyone differently. For me, I actually see an energy. I, I just do. I see an energy in people. And that allows me to see their essence different than their personality or what their personality is doing. I don't know how that works for other people, but my advice is always the same. You go to that place where you're connected and say, show me. Show me what's the truth for me. Nobody can judge what's authentic or inauthentic. You and creator, spirit, source, love know. And just keep asking. Just keep asking. Sister Jenna, how would you like to finish us up? You all have been wonderful, and I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for letting me do this. Testing. Okay, great. Isn't she amazing? Did you take a lot from this exercise and workshop? Didn't I tell you if you had to pay $5,000, you would leave very satisfied, wouldn't you? So you owe her. <laughs> but I'm taking donations for the Meditation Museum today. <laughs> um, I'm supposed to close up with the meditation, which I will, and I'll do it based on the principles that were given for us to be able to seep into it. But may I share with you just a little private experience that I was having in the back, um, listening to some of your stories and just feeling the energy in this space and looking now inside my own self. I was saying to myself, what is it with us? Why, why do we just get stuck on the bad and the stuff? You know, it's like something happens to us. It wasn't pleasant. And we'll spend maybe 90% of our thought and energy on that little stuff and negate all the amazing great things that we're going through. Um, and I know how you must feel when daughter, when you have given everything to your daughter and plus pay for the college. This is the hard part for the parents. That's right. When you're paying for it. And she's like, I'll text you once a week. You know, a lot of thoughts can come into your mind. Like, don't you love me? Didn't you ever love me? Did you, did you care? You mean all these, all of those thoughts are valid. And then I get back to a point that Diane has made and a point that we have in the BK culture. Every soul is an actor playing on their part. And as much as that feels liberating, what's mine though? What's mine in relation to this particular person in my life? And it goes back to what Diane was saying, but am I not love? You know, I have to be love. And it's so easy to say, and some days it's not so easy. But I've been thinking a lot, a lot, a lot on just the thought capacity. What are my thoughts doing to me? And to what extent am I serving myself with the highest level of thinking? So if I can think from an invisible place, which is a space void of the attachment to the stories, the people, the betrayal, uh, the, the, mother, the mother going through dementia, the organization, the company, the staff, the husband, the this, the that. It's like after a while when you go beyond all of those things, all of that, you go back to this default experience of just being very kind and very loving. And if we can only maintain that and be consistent, then we'll see a big shift in the world. You know, you really will see that once you're pretty cool, then people will start to get cool around you. What would you think? It's the metronomes. Yeah. I gave this presentation once, and I didn't say anything. Everybody just started going... <laughs> tick -tock. Like together, and at first I thought, I I'm having a stroke. I don't, these people are moving. But they were just feeling in alignment with love. And you're right, you can't, I, I don't want anyone to deny their feelings at all. You need to feel them. But I agree, everybody has their part to play. I, I look at it as a giant three billion piece puzzle, a seven billion piece puzzle. We all have our piece. Not any piece is more important than the other. Have y'all ever done like those thousand piece puzzles and that one daggone piece is missing and it's not complete? 
each one of you, every person you know, everybody on this planet that ever was, that ever will be, as in, is an important piece of the puzzle. And we just have to let them be the tree or be the bush or be the corn or whatever it is they're supposed to be. And what I'm learning for myself personally is that based on my reaction to the situations, the people, the things in my life, that's determining to what extent my love is activated. So if I'm upset, if I get frustrated, if I'm angry, I'm not taking care of myself and love's less. But if I'm responsive, am I able to accept and acknowledge and really genuinely without bias, just come from that real place, then I know that I'm in the process, I'm continuing the process, I'm nurturing me, I'm nurturing me. And so I think it's important for us to really keep weighing out where's my loss and where's my profit in a sense and how the thought is connected to profit or loss, not till it gets into manifestation of the physical. But does this thought take me into profit or does this thought take me into loss? And so um, once we start to pay more attention to the way that I'm thinking and the way these thoughts have me feeling and looking at you and, and thinking about how I think it should be, the more I'm paying attention from that place, I start to develop a kind of an inner a power and an inner ability to be more discerning with not only me, but with the relationships that are revolving around me. Because I'm experimenting with me. So it's definitely going to come out the way that I treat you. Kind of. Kind of. Right? So let's take a breather and take a deep breath in. Hold the moment. Be very present. On this particular day, you received some incredible gifts and treasures that were offered to you from service, from a place of service, from a place of charity, from a place of love. It was given to you without anything in return, other than you leave here better than you came in. So to the Be Love Principles, when I leave here today, let me greet everyone with an open heart and without an agenda. See the divine essence in every single soul. especially the ones that betrayed you or caused you pain. And if you took it to another level, did they cause me pain or did I accept the pain? Forgive quickly, completely, and unconditionally. Just keep remembering that you are the light. You never left the light of the all. Keep remembering you are the light. You never left the light of the all. Let's hold a moment of silence. 